Each uh, market segment uh, presents its own set of requirements and challenges uh, for temporary bonding technology. Uh, for example, if you consider advanced IC integration, ten-way for handling and temporary bonding is, is now uh, pretty much a well-established process for 2.5D interposer fabrication and um, DRAM stacking. For interposer fabrication, the device wafer is uh, usually temporarily bonded to a supporting wafer and then thinned down to a required thickness to expose the TSVs as the first step in uh, building the backside interconnect. In DRAM stacking, the thinned logic wafer is supported on a temporary bonded uh, wafer carrier uh, before DRAM dies are stacked onto the logic wafer. And if you look at fabrication of uh, power devices such as uh, IGBTs or MOSFETs, uh, the process involves thinning down those uh, uh, power device wafers to far less than 100 microns to enable better heat dissipation and higher power densities uh, for the devices. And at these thicknesses, the device wafers easily warp uh, due to the high in intrinsic stresses uh, in the structure. The same uh, thing holds true uh, for the next application in the compound semiconductor devices uh, where the common substrates that are used are uh, gallium arsenide, silicon carbide, indium phosphide or gallium nitride and uh, all these substrates have a very complex set of uh, epitaxially grown uh, compositions on the uh, on the device wafer which, which could also be a silicon wafer. Um, here the device wafers are also thinned uh, to below 100 microns for the same reasons for heat dissipation and performance and uh, due to the high internal stresses uh, from these epitaxial layers and, and the uh, wafer itself, uh, the wafer needs to be supported using a temporary carrier uh, during the downstream processes. So we saw three segments where temporary bonding and debonding is needed. And all these um, uh, three market segments have their own unique challenges um, due to the highly stressed substrates or requirement to withstand extreme processing conditions in terms of temperatures of up to 350 degrees C, or chemical resistance to harsh acids, bases, and solvents, and uh, requirements to withstand high vacuum environments during uh, CVD processes. Um, subsequent to all these processes, uh, the temporary bonding material must be able to be uh, debonded efficiently and cleaned without leaving any trace residues on the final device wafer. And so it is indeed a very challenging set of requirements for the temporary bonding materials to meet and qualify for advanced manufacturing.